talking to, you're talking certs, correct? Yes, no no police officers to be paid. And as far as the advertising will be on our we could do that. signs. There's a couple yeah. different routes we can go. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, on the question. Alderman Wesley. Uh, this to Frank. You, you don't even know if our cert people would even be interested in doing this again. Would let's put it out there. We're volunteering these people, and we don't even know if they're interested. Well, I, I think that that is open ended with regards to the, the amount of participation that we can muster. Okay. So if nobody volunteers, then exactly nobody going. Okay. I just don't want to speak for them and say, no, we're no. volunteering you to volunteer to Bensonville. Well, I'm a cert member. John's a cert member. New Zealand's a cert member. <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, discussion for the water rates. Would you guys actually like an update from Bensonville in your packet tomorrow? I can talk to their staff member and put an update on the shuttle and things like that tomorrow in the packets? Yes. Okay. Mr. Wilson, you're up. You want to take the lead? Or? Uh, you know, it's pretty, uh, the memo, I think, spelled it out pretty well. Um, we had assumed a 15% rate increase to $1.95 from the DuPage Water Commission uh, from some previous communications we had received from them. Um, unfortunately, due to their current financial state, they had to raise the rates 21%. Uh, which is an extra 13 cents that we had not planned on. Uh, so really at this point, uh, staff is looking for direction uh, from the committee and the council whether or not to pass along the 13 cents, which would require us to change uh, the ordinances that are in place currently to show that increase, or to absorb the rate increase um, at the current for one year, depending on what they do with the rates next year, might be more than 13 cents. We might be able to eat into that a little bit. Uh, the current cost based on the average consumption over the past few years would be about $55,000. We did build uh, that amount into the budget as a maximum exposure. Because at the time that we put the budget together, we were pretty confident that that 21% was gonna pass, but we didn't build that into the revenue side um, just because we didn't want to assume that we would that you guys were going to raise the rates so we built in a maximum exposure of the 21 percent rate increase but built the revenues based upon what was in the ordinance and we still passed the budget with about an eighty one thousand dollar surplus for the water fund um, so even if you were to absorb it that was already built in to that uh, surplus number for this year so just looking for direction which way you guys want to go on this. And when you say 81,000 surplus, you already took into consideration the CIP projects, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Alderman Lewitton. I had the pleasure this afternoon of going to the chamber lunch and hearing a very notable speaker say that uh, the, there is an enterprise fund in Wooddale and that all water rates are passed on to the citizens. Do you still believe that, Mayor Johnson, right now? Yes. Uh, the water system and the sewer system are both enterprise funds. That's the philosophy of the city of Wooddale, that it has to pay its own freight. I wish staff would make that recommendation in their memo. That would be helpful. But I, I do feel that you have to pass on this rate increase, although I will hear it from the residents, because there is most likely another rate increase coming very quickly. This just covers their emergency needs and uh, they're already talking about raising it again. Can I make, I'll make a comment on that, or a question to Brad. So, me personally, I'm in the position of absorbing this rate in this economy. Residents are already struggling and whatnot. I don't wanna just pass it to them. 
but if there is another increase that comes down, whether it be six months or whatnot, then we may have to look at it. I mean, we can't just keep absorbing everything either. Can't go into a deficit, in my opinion. But Alderman Wesley, Roy, um, sorry. I guess this question be to the mayor. The Water Commission, you, you were talking about the possibly another rate coming uh, with the new law going in effect, waiting for the governor to sign. And I was reading that most likely that this board would have to resign. Do they have? Are they the ones that make the decision of raising these rates now for the incoming board? Uh, yes, they may raise the rates as quickly as uh, in the next 30 or 60 days. Again. Uh, Mr. Firstenau, uh, the representative from Naperville, I don't know if you were at that meeting, suggested raising it by almost like a dollar or some absurd figure uh, to balance their budget and start building up their surplus again. Mr. Wilson. Okay. I believe uh, it was somewhere between like 73 and 78 percent, which would equate to uh, like a, I think it was like a dollar 13 or something like that. Uh, yes, it was a pretty, pretty, it was a 70, I think it was 78 cents, which was 50 percent jump. So it was a pretty, pretty drastic uh, measure. But Alderman Coles. I read in the Daily Herald that the whole board is going to be voted out. We're going to put a whole new board in. That was in the paper to, to, this morning. The Daily Herald on the front page. DuPage Water Commission is going to be voted all out. Everybody in it. So, got to watch what we're doing right now because it's going to be changing over. Hold on, Wesley. Mr. Mayor, let's do a follow up on the water rate for the Page County. Um, my question to you since you, you've been attending those meetings and feedback with them, um, have we got a copy of their financial statement that they have done? They hired this firm to come out and do a audit all the books. Have, has us city that are members of this organization, have we seen a copy of that um, report? Uh, I've seen the report. I don't know if it's been distributed to you, but I have read it. Yes. Well, it would be nice to see what was in that report that they found or didn't find because I still say there's some problems with the money yeah, over there. The My question here is, guys, I will tell you that this past weekend we had another major water main break on yes. Irving Park Road again in front of the Jewel. It's a 12-inch main. That has been the third water main break in a 50-foot section in the past two years. Something's got to be done with that water main line down the line. It's going to have to be slip, cover, whatever it's got to be. We got bad water mains by Christie's. Ballpark figure that I got this roughly to slip line that whole entire line is $5 million for the city. And for us to go in and slip line that whole whole line, the city don't have five million dollars to do it all on one project. And if we start cutting down on this water thing, also you're looking at a treatment plant that's coming online, or we may have to update some stuff in our treatment plant. I agree with you, Nuzio. I think we need to pass this on right now. I agree we should revisit it. I really think we should strongly pass the ordinance. That ain't what he said. I said absorb it right now. Absorb it. <laughs> well, that ain't I ain't what he said. Passing I, it on. I don't agree with that right now. Um, <laughs> the you just the thing that. is, I think we as a city council should have said a loud message with our signatures on to this, this water commissioner that we are not going to sit here as a council and allow this to keep going the way they're doing, upping these rates, without even coming to us and telling us why this is happening. What is the reason now for upping it again? No one has told us why they want to up it again. Now this, the reason why they're upping this too is to bring the shortfall up, okay? Now you're asking to increase it again, down the line, 60 days or 30 days, to build up their enterprise fund. There's gotta be another way that they could build up the enterprise fund some other way than strapping these communities like they are. So I am asking that Mayor, 
if we could get someone, hey, Brad, have you seen that report? I have not seen the report. Um, I've read all the articles in the Daily Herald, the Tribune, about the report, the stuff that they were able to get out of it. Um, but I haven't seen the mayor. entire uh, the entire report. So, Mayor, I, I'm as a council member, and going to ask the council to give approval that the, that report be forward to our finance department to look into what is actually in that report and what there might be the findings in that report. Because, and again, I think this council should send a loud, clear message to these people that we are not going to sit here and allow another 85% pay increase or 85% increase through the fact they want to build the surplus fund. When I read in there that they, a couple months ago, furniture, cars they buying, there's a problem there. And don't tell me there isn't. There's a problem there. It was right there, black and white in the paper, that they bought furniture, they want to buy cars. Enough. We had cut in ours. They need to cut theirs. So i really like to see a copy of that report. Mr. Wilson, you may make a comment. I'd say we'll see what we can do about getting a copy of that for you. If the mayor's seen it, I can... Uh... Well, I'll speak to the mayor, and we'll see about what we can do about uh, getting a full copy of that for you guys. Alderman Shockey. I do have to agree with Alderman Wesley. Uh, I don't want to have to go back in two months and say, or three months and say, we're going to raise your rates again without a good reason. This is an enterprise fund. We have to pass it on as we get it. If we get a report and find out what these people are doing, that's another story. Right now, we're being billed so much, we have to pass that on. We don't have a choice. As he said, we've got water main breaks continually. We need that. I was going to ask, what is the $80,000 for? It's to maintain the water lines, isn't it? That surplus of 80000 somebody mentioned? Well, that's going to go very, very quick if they keep breaking like they are. So I, I, do, not, I do not see pulling money out of other funds when this is an enterprise fund. Bill, would we get billed? And we don't have a choice. Alderman Lewinton. My observation is that we have two issues here across the table that are being discussed. And one of them is not relevant to our discussion, though it is relevant to our needs. The discussion about what's wrong with the DuPage Water Commission I think we should uh, fold it right now, but not give it up. I think it should be pursued in a, in a, on a proper committee meeting on the subject. But right now, the only question is, do we pass on additional costs that are levied on us? And the consensus, as I hear it, is we don't want to, but we're obligated by the Enterprise Fund to do it. So let's make a motion to pass it and a, another motion to pursue the study of, what should I say, the deficiency in their brains <laughs> uh, at a separate meeting. Are you making a motion to? Yes, I am. Pass the 13 cents on? Yes, and I'm I am. A motion. On the question? Dan, second. And a question, anybody? No. I think we better get a roll call here. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Cadella? Yes. Alderman Police? No. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Roy Wesley? Yes. Alderman Lewiton? Yes. Motion passes. And, and then I had that second motion that we, we should pursue. Was well, that a motion? I don't, I don't think we need a motion. It, for it that. is a recommendation then. Mr. Wilson's already going to get us that letter. Mr. Coles? I don't think we have any authority to investigate anybody that's on the board. That is handled by the state of Illinois. Is it pertaining to the discussion? Pertaining it's, to the... No, no, I'm to talking about... Right. It's for future meetings. Next. Items, items to be considered on future meetings, commu commuter parking fee,
question and answer, new solid waste contractor. Anything else? Yep. Alderman Wesley. Um, I'd like to have a full discussion on all the information that, to get it from the Water Commission. We're the ones that, that pay the bill. We're the ones that pay them. And we're the customer. So um, I don't know why we didn't get this report. but I think that's already on, right? Well, when right. I... You're going to get the report and make a report to us on what's going on? Oh, sure. Anything else? Alderman Lewitton. I would like to take an opportunity to say thank you to, uh, to uh, Mark Halm of uh, Walter Deutsch Associates. After the last meeting, uh, I asked him a question about carbon footprint, and he took the time to write back a two-page letter on one question that was asked to him and the copies were sent to everybody and I think that well I just feel personally gratified that somebody took the subject seriously and gave inexpensive quick fix answers on carbon footprinting and I, I'm not pushing anything I just want to say to uh, say to Mark Halm thank you for taking the time to send us this letter and we'll discuss this next week, uh, May the 27th, when, when we do discussion with the, the solid waste again. Any other items? Oh. Too late. What do you mean too late? Go ahead. I don't know what committee comes under. Um, but I want to talk about uh, uh, movies in the park. Does it come under finance or does it come under public works? Movies in the park. Finance. Okay. Can I reject that one? No. Why do you want to reject it? No, no, it's okay. That's for the citizens. <laughs> you got to uh, understand that, Jeff? Movies in the park? Motion to adjourn. Say it. <laughs> Some discount he's talking about. What? Oh, Go disc ahead. discounts for low income? for people that make uh, for underwater rates. We have a policy now for, Brad, do you want to help me out here? Go. Yeah, just real quick, a uh, quick broad brush. Um, we have a, a discount for, uh, it's called the senior citizen uh, discount on your water bill. Uh, and it uses the very low income standards as designated by HUD. Um, and if you fall below these thresholds, you get $5 off of your water bill and $5 off of your garbage bill. Uh, it only qualifies, you have to meet the very low income standards and you either have to be a senior citizen, a widow or widower with dependent children or permanently disabled. And that was started back, that ordinance was originally passed back in 1992. Um, and there's been, we've had a few phone calls lately um, questioning, you know, if, if that amount should maybe be higher or if it should be a little, if the classification should be broadened to encompass more people. And Salderman, so uh, R. Wesley was, I think, looking to see if, if we wanted to, to broaden that or change the amount or something to that effect. So we're going to have a discussion on this? So what you're asking? For future. Not today. So we couldn't absorb the 13 cents, but we're going to give bigger discounts. Okay. <laughs> No problem. I'm just curious. No. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good. You can't second this. <laughs> I'd like to call the order of the May 13th Public Health, Safety, and Judiciary Committee. Uh, the roll call just show the same members are present. Uh, I'd like to make my motion to approve the May meeting minutes of April 22nd. 2010. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Number four is a report and recommendation on an, an increase in the Class P liquor license from seven to eight. Uh, I would like to make a motion that this be denied. Or do I have a second? Second. Second. Any conversation? With the rope? Why? Pardon me? Are you are you making a statement? 
Did you want the floor? Did you want the floor? Yes. Can okay, go ahead. I'll I, I, I just wanted to ask, what is uh, the argument in favor of denial? Alderman Eugene Wesley. My opinion is there's just too many liquor licenses being established in this committee. I mean, everyone want liquor license. I mean, how many more are we going to give away? I mean, it's time to, for this council to sit here and stop giving liquor license like there's water. It's, it's time to step to the plate. We, we allow so many, and every time someone comes in, we add. I don't think it's right to add another one. That's my, my argument. As well as that there's only parking for two cars in front of this establishment. So can we vote on it? Would you please call the roll? Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Cadella? Yes. Alderman Police? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Roy Wesley? Yes. Alderman Lewiton? Yes. Next item is the items to be discussed at future meetings. Um, one item is the General Assembly passed a bill reducing court fines and fees due to communities. Uh, I'd like to uh, have the chief speak to us about that problem and uh, if we can handle that in the local court so that we don't have to be sharing more fees to the state. If we can do that uh, for the meeting of uh, first meeting in June, I'd appreciate it for the first committee meeting in June. Another item is uh, exotic pets. I'd like to have that on the agenda for the first meeting in June. Anybody, any other items? None? If so, I uh, will ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Call the Public Works Committee the order make the minute take a note the same people are present i need a motion to approve the april 22nd uh 2010 minutes that will be my motion do i have a second second question changes all in favor aye, aye. aye. motion carries next item is report and recommendation for compact burden base under new pavement um, you guys should receive a update that they put together. We had this discussion about the impact, how they packed the um, ground for the uh, street. Uh, Want to give us an update or a quick overview of your memo? Sure. Uh, this item came up some months ago, and uh, it's been sitting for a while on our items for future discussion. I prepared the memo you got in your packet, and I'm, I'm really covering kind of two topics with this. One, just the question of testing, and the other, uh, the question of the pavement composition itself. The, the two are kind of linked, and I, I don't remember the origin of the original request to put this on here, which one of those items uh, we were looking at. But again, the two are closely linked together. Um, I, I guess a couple of things I would point out is there's a lot of different variables in this, a lot of different ways you could do it. You could probably get 10 different engineers and contractors in here and get 10 different answers or recommendations on how to do the pavements. Um, we typically follow IDOT standards, but it has to be pointed out, most of our projects are not state funded. We don't have to follow IDOT standards. We can really do whatever we want. Um, and this is listed on the agenda as report and recommendation. I think it just as easily could have been put as a discussion items. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear all of your thoughts on this topic, if you have any strong opinions on it. Um, nothing has to be decided or changed tonight. Uh, again, I gave a couple of thoughts in my memo on it, but I'd like to hear what you think. And if, again, if, if, some, if you want to change something, we either do it tonight or something could be brought back later. Ms. Hill, please. Dave, uh, on the second page, under discussions and recommendations, talking about this year we're doing Elmhurst, six inch aggregate subbase, and a 10 inch subbase is proposed for Deer Path. If 
if Deer Path is done this year or next year, that's another discussion. But what was it for School this Street? Uh, School Street was four inches. So why is Elmhurst uh, six inch? Just out of curiosity, I mean, don't we have a standard that we follow or? What we've, the standard we've followed over the years is four inches. That's what's been done. Um, two things on Elmhurst. Elmhurst has a lot, the soil borings came back with a lot of uh, unsuitable material, a lot of topsoil. So we're undercutting for that. Now that, that undercut, which is a foot, is not counted in that six inches, but knowing we have that bad soil, you know, I always like to have a little bit increased factor of safety on that. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, um, if you remember the all the rain we had last October, which uh, caused some difficulties with the school street um, road bed, we had to do some undercutting. We had to um, do a little bit of extra work out there. Uh, a lot of extra rolling to get the ruts out as the vehicles were going through. Putting in a couple extra inches will help out if we run into that situation again. So those are the reasons why we increased a little bit uh, for Elmhurst. And the 10-inch the sub, sub base, so are we putting in 10 inches underneath that 6-inch? Is, is, is that the standard or depending on the street? Like uh, I heard uh, when we did Royal Oaks, their base is terrible. I mean, is that a street where you were going to have to redo the whole sub base and then do the aggregate on top of that and then the asphalt? Or? Yeah, it depends on the street, depends on the results of the soil boring. If it indicates a strong, you know, subgrade, strong dirt, basically, and stable dirt underneath the street, you can do less. If it's, if it's soft and weak or topsoil, then you would do more, but it tends to be done on a case by case basis. So each street could be different. It's it not. Could be yes. Can I continue? Yeah. I mean, I brought this up because um, I was watching those guys do the alleys, and uh, I saw them kind of grade it out after it was dug out. They pour in some stone, it's mixed or some was mixed, and they were going back and forth with the bobcat, and basically they put a little uh, steel down the center and. And that was it. No, I, I really didn't see any compaction or. That's that's why I brought this up. I mean, shouldn't we be here? I remember when I did a parking lot right here in town, they would have to pass a test. Uh, some kind of compaction test had to be a 95 percent or 98 percent. We don't do that anymore. Or that was just for. We do the density testing where someone actually comes out there with the nuclear gauge and tests it for all the asphalt. We haven't been doing that for the stone underneath the asphalt. You can do that. It's not, you can actually do it on the, on the dirt itself underneath the stone. It's not as accurate. It's more accurate to just watch a heavily loaded truck drive over it and see if it's uh, um, pumping or rutting or not. Um, so we, we can do that, you know, IDOT allows that, but they have a lot more flexibility on that. So we haven't done it in the past, um, but we could certainly add that. Again, it's one of those things where there's different ways of doing it. Um, it's more money to do the additional testing. And again, as you get further down the pavement layer, it gets to be less important, but it's something that could be done. But as far as the compaction on, like, say, the alleys, they, we don't do that? Right. Well, the specs didn't call for a certain percentage of compaction on that. It's, it's, so it is a visual inspection of that the stone that's underneath it. Um, I would say, again, that when you get into the, to the thinner stone layers underneath the pavement, like what the alleys had, it's less there to provide strength for the pavement. You know, the concrete is really providing the strength out there, and it's more for drainage and to have a platform to work on. Um, I guess that would, that would probably be my best explanation, that it's the, it's the concrete and it's the ground underneath it that, that provide the majority of the strength for that pavement. 
Anything else? Anyone else? Dave, I, I suggest that we do follow, that we do do the testing on anything to make sure it is done the correct way. Okay. Okay, I'm certainly open to that. Um, I, my, probably my recommendation would be in conjunction with that, that we go with at least six inches rather than the four. Um, it's, it's more material is easier to compact and it's easier to pass the test if you have more on there. The, the four inches is probably gonna cause some problems getting the test to, to pass. So I would well, see, recommend I more testing. We go with a little bit thicker. Um, and again, we, we've we been doing that with, you know, doing that with Elmer Street, doing it with some of the roads anyway. Maybe right. just make that as a standard, do it with all of them. I think I agree making it standard. I mean, does everyone else agree making it standard? Yes. I have a yes. John? News? Joe? Yes. Roy? Yes. Yes. So make it a standard. All right. Anything else on that item? Mayor, you don't have your hand up? Um, the other item is a recommendation Deer Path Road Sidewalk Survey Request. As you know, you, in your packet, there was a survey sent out, which we just did, that we are doing on it in, in Ward 4. The majority of them are against sidewalks. So... No, we got a petition in Ward So my suggestion is that we don't move forward with these sidewalks over there. Because the survey came back 15 against, 8 for, and 1 not sure. Does Alman have to say anything on that? Alman, Joe Coles. All right. I talked to Dave and I told him that uh, as long as there's 15 Seven. against, then don't put any sidewalks in. And he agreed with me. And, but, uh, He said that he would put it in swales alongside the curbs, and that'll have to go. That that swale will have to go. Uh, and he says it's, it's it'd be easier for him not to put in sidewalks than it would to put sidewalks in. So, I I'm going to according to this survey, that that's what they want. That's what they'll get. Here's your place, Dave, on that street. <laughs> Is it is the street going to be made wider than it is right now, um, or is it the street already at width? Because it kind of has some gravel and then the swale. You're going to put in the curbs and the swales, or the drain ditch, whatever, behind it. it it'll be widened a little bit. I mean, the width varies a little bit, so it'll be widened probably a couple of feet, um, if nothing else, for the get the curb on there. So there'll be a little bit of widening. I don't know the exact amount, probably varies, but most of our streets are about um, 20 to 22 feet wide. We're gonna be coming in now and we'll be 25 feet back a curb to back a curb. So there'll be a couple of feet wider than what it is. Not anything dramatic, but a little bit. With the, with the ditches in behind the sidewalk, does that mean there's not going to be any sewers going in? Is that what you're telling me? Or? No, we want to preserve the ditches because we want to preserve that storage volume. There's a lot of drainage problems out there, and we really don't want to start filling those in. So there'll be a storm sewer in conjunction with that. We might take existing ditches and make them more shallow than what they are now, and I think that makes it easier to maintain for people. But we're going to do whatever we can to preserve the volume. So there'll be a storm sewer. There has to be a storm sewer to accommodate the curb and gutter. And there's actually an existing storm sewer on the south side of the of the street there. So we'll enhance that and use that and keep some some shallow ditches as well. Um, obviously, not putting the sidewalks in makes it easier to do the ditch work because if you put a sidewalk in, you have to tighten up that ditch so you have room for the sidewalk. So I guess if if you're looking for an advantage to not doing sidewalk, it makes it easier to do to do the uh, the drainage and to keep those ditches. I got a. I was driving by the other day, and it looks like 
I see the ditches on the north side of the street, and then all of a sudden at one house, the ditch is gone. It's like dirt's been covered in. I don't know if somebody put a pipe all the way across this property and covered the pipe. What happens in a case like that if, if the, there's supposed to be a ditch there? You're going to put one back in? Is that what you're telling me? Normally, yes, we'll reestablish that ditch. I don't know the details of the particular house you're talking about, but in general, yeah, we'll, we'll reestablish. But what if the owner put a, at his expense, put in a, a pipe and covered it? Uh, if it's we'll, on our right of way, we got the right yeah, to take we'll it out. Yeah, we'll pull it out, and okay. we, you know, we did some of that with School Street, and we'll do some of that probably with Elmhurst. Um, it's really, it's really the way it has to be. If we don't do that, we run into problems where, um, you know, usually in these areas, the houses are lower than the street or even with the street. If, if we don't do that, we're just going to be draining our right of way back onto private property. And right. we, we just want to avoid that at all costs. Okay. Alman Joe Coles. Uh, years ago, uh, the city had a policy that if you wanted a, to fill in the ditch, they would bring the pipe in and you could, they would dig it out and lay the pipe in and then cover it up. That was many years ago, because that's what they were doing along, along a lot of the streets, so the ditch wasn't in front of the house. But the city used to do that. But then they got away from that. They put in a steel pipe and they had nothing but trouble with the steel pipes collapsed after they rotted away a little bit. That was done years ago. Um, and that sure. was free. Oops. Hey, Dunjo? Yes. Um, sure. I personally have a problem with it because of the safety factor, but this is what the people voted for, and I will make a motion that we not put sidewalks on Deer Path between I, Central and the city limits. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, report and recommendation, a safety ornamental railing installation uh, on the Salt Creek Bridge. Uh, my concern, and it was brought to my attention, is with the grade separation, we weren't sure if that bridge was gonna be refigured over or what they were doing with that bridge. Um, I've been assured by Jeff that he has talked to Ron Crawl, who has been on that project from since CTE took him under the wings. Uh, my question is, what's this railing look like? Uh, there's a picture of it on the back of the memo. It's uh, exactly, uh, I believe it's the same as the fencing on the bike bridge over by the Target, same prairie style fencing. Um, I can give a brief background on the project if you'd, if you'd like me to. Oh, you can make it short? Yes. I'll make it short. Uh, just a brief background. Uh, the mayor uh, worked with Representative uh, Rebelletti and was able to uh, secure this $75,000 grant. We already have the, the money in our coffers, so it's ready to be spent. It's 100% funded, so there's no matching on our end. Um, the grant uh, is supposed to be geared towards uh, improving uh, the bridge along the Salt Creek area. Um, staff is recommending installing this uh, safety safety railing. It also acts as an aesthetic improvement because it's going to be prairie style in the downtown vicinity. Um, talked to a couple uh, manufacturers for the fencing. Um, it's going to come in under $75,000, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. We do have a time frame that we have to spend this money by. Uh, no later than June 3rd of 2011. Uh, Mayor, I don't know if you have uh, anything to add about the grant. Uh, no, I think this would be an appropriate use of the money. Uh, if there's sur surplus funds, is there any chance we can put some prairie-style lighting in as part of the bridge project as well? I don't see why not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. I have... Um Are you going to tell me the money's there? Because I don't see it. I didn't see it on a separate line item in, in the budget for the grant money that we have asked for for several times now. Uh, myself and uh, Mr. Wilson are working on that. It is in the 
We do have the check. I've seen the check. I got the check myself, so I know we have the check. So it is there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll make a motion to approve Salt Creek Bridge safety ornamental railing installation, not to see, well, it's a grant, so. Well, we're actually going to cut, this was just kind of to approve the project. We're going to have to come back with you after we go out for bid because we're going to go out for bid for the project. So we'll come back. We just want an approval on the the idea of going forward so using the grant on this. Mayor, we don't need it as a motion, do we? Just so. Uh, Okay. So we'll come back. I recommend staff moves for all in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, with life.